verbal boot camp, which, which means we put her through a process of socialization and obedience. Uh, so Ashley's going to take her out, and the train station happens to be a place of a lot of triggers, right? There's all kinds of things happening. So she's going to come out. She's going to ask the dog to heal. He's a little afraid. And then she's going to walk. You're going to notice she's relaxed. The dog's on her left. There's no tension on the leash. There's no pinch collars, no prong collars, no electric collars. She's just walking. She's going to turn towards me. And Luna stays right on her left side, and she's relaxed. Make a left. So the point is, there's a lot of uh, distractions, but the handler's relaxed. Hi, honey. How are you? How come you're not at the show anymore? No good? What have you been up to? Slow down, come to a stop. Ask her, stay. Drop the leash. So here we are, as I said, there. this is distraction central. People, places, noises, echo, shadows. She'll get low and the dog will come through. She'll stand up, thanks, good luck. Stand up, heal, and I'll see you somewhere else. Okay, continuing with our little video. We introduced this place day one, so now 10 or 11 days later, it's a no-brainer. We have all kinds of triggers. The dog won't get up. And there, believe me when I tell you, there are more distractions. Go ahead, our little raccoon. It's no different than a cat or a squirrel to the dog. So we have a lot of distractions. Then Ashley, when she's ready, she's gonna park her squirrel. All right, she's gonna get low. <laughs> the dog comes and she loves. This is huge. It's amazing. She loves, loves, loves. If she wants the dog to go back, she just heads back to her place. Asks her to go place. The dog goes up and stops the leash. Looks at me. She's spilling everything. Pick up all your food and stuff. This is relaxation. I'm not. Ex Ashley's a very experienced handler. I'm not expecting her to you to do this. What we're showing you is the dog is capable of this, very capable after 10 days of training. So we want to make sure you understand that. She's going to get low one more time and then we're going to go for a walk. <laughs> Here we are, huge distraction. She's happy, her tail is up, there's no fear. She was obviously a little concerned about the train and she was concerned about coming up and down the stairs because dogs don't have the same depth perception. Now she does it without a problem. No tension. There's no there's no tension on that leash. Period end of story. Good. We're going into the no, you don't have to. Let's go by these people. Through this little echoey tunnel. Keep going. At the end make a left. Make a left. Happy, happy dog, very regal. Come to a stop. Ask her to sit. Ask her. Right. Cut that. So, go there, you just keep going. So, we just again, distractions, distractions, distractions. Make a left. Good. Manhole covers. She's a little nervous because she was in a tight spot. So what this is all about is a socialization, socialization. Just a tight spot, be careful. Go ahead, perfect. Good. Okay, good, go to place. We have what we call unintentional blindness or inattentional blindness. We block things out. Make a right. Trains, people, noises, shadows. People don't see the shadows, dogs see shadows. Dogs don't see, understand anything. Make a left. Slow down. Ask her to sit. Stay. Wave to the crowd, wave. No hands, no tension, no anxiety, no talking, touching. She's just gonna get low. Dog's gonna come. So the command for the dog to come is actually getting low. She stands up, she steps out with her left foot, and that's the command to walk. So this is a good day. Good day at Poundstown University, turbo training. Notice she's just going. It's not negotiating. She's calm and assertive. Calm 
and assertive. Top 10 list. Notice Ashley is not looking, talking, or touching. There's no tension. There's a leash and collar on at all times. The thing I want to demonstrate now is that we teach a dog to go to place, whether it's a mat or a crate. You always have to have the ability to teach a dog to go to a place, regardless of the distraction. So Ashley's just going to start by having Luna go to this bed. Leash and collar's always on when you're under the dog's, when the dog is under your supervision. We don't look, talk, or touch unless we want to stimulate the dog. Ashley's going to walk away, so she's not looking, talking, and touching. When she turns, she's going to do a combination of behaviors. Now, so continuing, all she's going to do now is get low, clap her hands, and call the dog and see if that gets the dog to come. And that behavior, just now she looks, talks, and touches. She praises the dog. Then just for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to put her on another bed. Leash and collar's always on when the dog is under your supervision. Now the dog stays there. We just started doing this today. The dog has to stay until she's released. Now Ashley's gonna release her by giving her a verbal command and the dog comes off. Now she loves her, then she's gonna go to her crate. Same thing, she's gonna direct her to her crate. And we obviously are not gonna do this at home. The only place a dog gets food is after they go in the crate. We don't lure them in with food. Don't let the dog cross social boundaries, meaning dog can't jump, sniff crotches, uh, and in the videos we'll show you how we fix that. Everything must be initiated by the human. Notice Ashley is gonna initiate everything. When she's ready, Ashley is gonna get low and clap her hands, and that will release the dog. Then she praises the dog. Don't talk to the dog, never yell, don't get mad, don't get angry. And now the dog is on free time and we go about our business, whatever that is. When you can't supervise her, she needs to go in her crate, whether you're taking a shower. So just like a child, they have to be under the human supervision so they don't get themselves in trouble. Okay, very good, that's a wrap.